So we are outside a corner shop in Portsmouth. I think Mary Camper is inside, um, doing a bit of her shopping. Have a little read of this in a minute. Uh, to introduce chapter four, we have Miss Norcott, who is second in English. Enjoy. Chapter four, Tuppence Worth of Chestnuts. First Minister Theodore Fortin was at Bury Hall in his reading chamber, surrounded by official documents on his writing desk. He took off his glasses to rub his tired eyes and breathed in deeply. He put the glasses back on, reached for his quill pen and dabbed it gently in the inkwell, making alterations to a document. He replaced the pen and picked up the document, looking over to his right, where a small vole pointed at him and counted down from five, signalling to Theodore to speak to his listening wireless audience. Reception was poor, but Theodore's solemn-toned, slow-paced voice could still be heard through the distant crackle. I speak to you this evening, seated here in the Alvara chambers of the Great Bury Hall, a parliament started by the will of this people. And I speak to you this evening, should you recognise my voice, with my paws laid bare and bereft for you to search, as I have done so myself these past few weeks. And I am left, my mind lost and yet my heart still heavy with responsibility, with few answers and many prayers. As I am left, as we all are, to carry the burdens of our stories. And it is my burden now to learn too late that we fail to recognise the field when we hold on to a single blade of grass. My burden here in this life will now be in exile. The Alvastocracy rests today, its last day. My only hope and comfort is that our lives, those of the creatures of Gosport, will be remembered in the stories passed on and in the bravery created in our adversity. A will that does not divide, but is a will to live. A will intended to survive. Lord bless us and keep us safe. The Gosport Crier usually a weekly periodical, was becoming a daily one with its readers' demand for news. First Minister Fortin's wireless message was the front page story and copies of the crier were selling out fast. Mary Camper was at the corner shop, ga quietly gathering a few bits in her basket for supper. She was standing in the aisle at the back when a young, sweet-faced red squirrel entered the shop. The bell of the door sounded as she did so. The two female shopkeepers, both grey squirrels, peered over at her from their perch next to the till. Could I have a tuppence worth of chestnuts, please? asked the young doe as she eagerly approached the counter. She could barely see over the top of it, but had her pennies ready to hand over, stretching out her paw. Well, what do you think, Margaret? Should we sell this red doe some chestnuts? called Frances to her colleague as she sat filing her claws behind the counter. Well, I think we're terribly busy, Frances. I know I simply cannot spare the time. She flicked over the pages of her magazine without actually reading them. Besides, I think we've run out, she added. But I can see them on the top shelf, just there, replied the young doe innocently, pointing to behind where the shopkeepers were sitting. Oh no, you're clearly mistaken, replied Frances. No, look, there they are. With that, Frances stood up from her stool, clearly irritated. Look here, she said forcefully. We haven't got any. You're being very rude and I'm afraid we shall have to ask you to leave now. But, but nothing. Now, I've asked you to leave and leave you should. Go on now and try not to touch anything as you go with your filthy paws. Shoo! She came out from behind the counter to usher the young one out of the shop. The two shop assistants continued their conversation as if nothing just had happened. It says here that every whisker that falls out never goes back the same, said Margaret. I can believe that, can't you, Frances? But Josephine down my way believes it brings you luck. She wishes on each one she loses. She walked back to the counter to continue filing her claws. Mary, still at the back of the shop, observed the awful treatment of the youngster and fearing a similar fate, started replacing the items that were in her basket. Can we help you, love? 
called out Frances, hearing someone was at the back of the shop. Um, uh, no, uh, quite okay, thank you, replied Mary, flustered, turning so that her tail would not be visible where it poked out from beneath her cloak. Well, we have a special offer on the bread rolls today, if you're interested, and we have some lovely chestnuts, called out Frances as she walked towards the back of the shop. With that, Mary placed her basket on the floor and shuffled quickly out of the door, leaving the two shopkeepers to jeer at the sight of her tail as she left. They had not realised she was a red. As she left, and in such a hurry, she accidentally bumped into a passerby on the street. The chicken looked at her in disgust and knocked her backwards slightly, causing her to bump into a brown rabbit who looked in horror at the colour of her fur. Mary quickly wrapped her cloak tightly around her for comfort and hurried away towards home.